Welcome, 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 all you lovers of horror, sci-fi, and fantasy. It's time yet again for another thrilling, exciting installment of, you guessed it, Fear and Fascination, Horror, Sci-Fi, and Fantasy Unleashed. Coming at you live every Saturday night from... Uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time, roughly, <laughs> uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time, right here on Get Real Global TV and Get Real Global Radio, KGRL. You can watch us live on our YouTube channel, Get Real Global TV. We're also Get Real Global TV on Twitch and TikTok. And you can check out our Linktree page to see all of our social media and website links. Just type in at Jennifer DeVoe Muse. And you can check out our radio station, Get Real Global Radio, KGRL, on our radio station on Spreaker. We're also syndicated on iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube Music. We're on TuneIn, Amazon Music, Audible, Apple Podcasts, plus pretty much everywhere else that you can watch or listen to podcasts. We are also distributed by Sony Music Entertainment, Sony Music. Publishing, The Orchard by Sony, and 5050 Global Music Incorporated. I'm your hostess with the most is Jennifer DeVoe Muse. Hello to everyone watching or listening to this broadcast around the world. Now let's say hello to our lovely co-host, the sultry songstress herself, Amy Bowman. Hey, it's Saturday. It's a great day. I know, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm lost on the day of the week. Um, uh, uh, I'm here, Jenny. Thought I saw Shyler may have come on, but maybe not. But that's all right. We're going to bring on, uh, hopefully her camera's on, my beautiful daughter who, there we go. There (laughs) she is. Hello. Samantha Bailey. (laughs) Uh, at, at this time at her own apartment and not on camera with me. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I have to work. Uh, you know, on on Saturdays occasionally now. Uh, it's weird oh, well. getting used to this new. We make it for- work. We make it. Work. <laughs> yeah, for now. All right. <laughs> we'll see. And then eventually we won't have to work for other <laughs> fucking people again. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. Here we go. So, uh, everybody having a good week so far? Yeah. No, yeah I literally just, no, I literally just talked to Amy last night. I, on her other show, but. I was like, yeah, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, crazy. All right, here we go. All right, now we're going to bring on our featured guest. Oh, sorry. The Mac Daddy of Metal, Shyler Staber, is actually, uh, he's been sick. So, now I found Aww. out what's going on so yeah but, uh, so i hope he feels it better he slept through the whole broadcast last night apparently woke up from a, a, a coma and went oh a oh, damn <laughs> <laughs> hey it's, i don't care as long as he's okay that's all that matters to me okay. all right we're gonna bring on our featured guest none other than special effects artist director he is an actor, a producer. I don't think there's too many things this man can't do. And his name is Joe Castro. Woo! Hey, Joe. Hey, everybody. Welcome hello, Samantha. To- hello, Amy. Welcome, welcome to the show. Hello, Jennifer. Yeah, welcome. thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, there we go. You. So you're playing Russian. Wing, ding. There you go. I'm dizzy. Happy, around. happy Saturday. I like that. Happy Saturday. Yes. Happy Saturday. Exactly. Happy Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you on tonight and talk about all your newest projects, which you have been a very, very busy man, as always. Well, thank you for having me on the show. I just want to take a moment and say thank you, all three of you, for having a show like this and giving uh, artists like myself a platform to express ourselves uh, because sometimes when we're busy in the details, we forget that there's a world around us. So I am very grateful and honored that you will take the time to talk with me and uh, let me talk about myself a little bit. Thank you. Oh, yes. so nice. We're, we're very you. happy to have you here. Yes. yes. I'm Thank excited. You. I'm so excited. So I know you've been working on a bunch of awesome stuff. Um, so I guess let's, <laughs> let's start with, let's start with, I know you've been doing Terror Tunes 4. I know you were doing that and you've already completed all that and 
Yeah, Terror Tunes Four was released back in August of last year, and okay, uh, gotcha. we we you know we the movie has been been out on the market. You can you can currently watch it uh, for free on Tubi TV. Oh, nice! Part oh. four, and uh, you know if you wonder what's Terror Tunes, is that like animated? What is that? Well, Terror Tunes is both live action and animation. It's a feature film, and it's about the devil makes these cartoon characters that come through out through the TV and into the real, real world to harm oh, children man. and people. And when they kill oh. you, these char cartoon characters are evil. They kill you. They kill you with cartoon weapons, but you die for real. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, That's wow. crazy. So if you've never seen anything like, yeah, if you've never seen Terror Tunes, you've never seen anything like Terror Tunes. It's kind of like okay. its, own, its own like sub genre, its own weird kind of little cult genre. And uh, oh, my wow. husband, my husband Stephen Escobar and I uh, have been. Uh, we own the franchise. We created the franchise back in two thousand. Oh, awesome. So now we're on part four, and uh, you know the fans oh, love great. it. Yeah. So wow. Um, put it on and watch the first five minutes, and if it doesn't entice you, turn it off. But I bet you will have you hooked in the first five. Minutes. <laughs> I, go I love anything that. twisted. You'll, you'll be what? <laughs> you, you, you know how like um uh, um uh. What's that? Pixar at the beginning of a Pixar movie, they have like a short little like five minute film to kind of get the audience revved up. It's like a little right. short cartoon. We right. have one of those. We have one of those at the beginning of our movie as well. Oh, kind that's of, crazy! Kind of get you into oh, like okay. the terror tune, the terror tune spirit before you get into the all the crazy stuff of the movie. I love it. Yeah. Nice. Yes. That is great. Heck yeah. <laughs> And then you can, and then if you want to watch the first three terror tunes or you want to buy the whole collection, you can go to uh www.terrortunes.tv and you can buy. We, we, we just released the quadrilogy, which is all four feature films in one, one collection. And, oh, uh, wow! Yeah, so it's, a, it's a very nice collector's edition, uh, quadrilogy uh, box set. Well, that's great. Nice, yeah. Mom, I, like I, know that. What doing, I know what we're doing tomorrow, Mom. <laughs> 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 We're, it's it's uh, mommy and daughter day, and we'll be doing apparently a marathon of terror tunes. So I'm I'm down, I'm down. Um, yeah, Ex excellent. You know, like I said once again, if you don't like the strange, if you don't like the strange and unusual, this is probably not a film for you. We love it. Uh, okay, yeah, we we're we're very strange and unusual uh, people. Yeah. So I, I was it's right up our alley. I was at a I mean. Yeah, I was at a horror convention a year ago, and this young kid yeah. and his friend were at the convention. It was more like a haunted house convention, but there were right. horror people there. And he came over to the table, and he's like, we want to watch a really weird movie, and we're looking for something really weird. And my husband literally just walked in to the convention, <laughs> and, he and he was carrying like some DVD, some Blu-rays he had just burned, and one of them was oh, yeah? Street, which is the weirdest of the of all, all four. I'm like, oh, this wow. is the no one's ever bought a copy of this on Blu-ray. Here's the first one. Do you want to try it? He's like, yes. It's like, it's just oh, that's so cool. That's yeah. cool. Uh, yeah, I'm into stuff like uh, Blood Diner with Carl Crew. Oh, you're looking to love it then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Jackie uh, Gong, yeah. Jackie uh, Gong was, one of my, one, was one of my, my biggest mentors. And Jackie, oh, yeah. Jackie the, the woman that directed Blood Diner. In fact, oh, I yeah. love Oh, yes. All right, I, yes. And yeah. uh, I, have, I have I've had the honor and the privilege to have Jackie become one of my best friends over the years. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And she's, oh, uh, she, she doesn't realize that I'm her number one fan. You know, oh. I, I, I tell her that too. I'm like, I'm your number one fan. You just don't realize it yet. And there, there, was, there was actually like a, uh, her first feature film that she directed, she directed Blood Diner. I think it's probably her biggest hit, but she also directed this that. movie called The Being. And when I was 13 years old, I, I rented that movie from, I uh, that. A, from Amazon, oh, no, from Albertsons. Albertsons used to have like a little video store in the store. Oh, yeah. And I, when I got it on VHS and I watched it, and I was so inspired by this movie. I, and I, I think it's because for two reasons. One, it totally delivers. Like, you know, you want to see a movie about a monster and she delivers it, but it's also because it's a female director and female directors have this really cool way of like looking at a, the classic storyline, but from a totally different perspective that hasn't been told over and over and over again, where you, you know, okay. and so, she, she, so I am, um, that year, I think I saw it in the summer, and that year for Halloween, I had a Halloween party, and I made everybody sit down and watch The Being. So my Halloween party was all, like, the whole theme of the Halloween party was for her movie, The Being, you know. Oh, that's and great. I had that story to tell her when, I, when I, the first time I met her. And I'm like, I'm, yeah, I don't, don't think I'm crazy, but I'm kind of your number one fan. So but, uh, she knows it, too. She, hey. she, 
Yeah, I love her. I'm into all that weird stuff. Yeah, I'm into yeah. weird stuff. You know, killer clowns from outer space. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I like the evil bong movies okay. with Tom yeah. Kong and like all that weird. The weirdest. I like the weirdest <laughs> shit ever. I swear. Have, to God. have you Have you ever seen this movie called? No, 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 this this movie was first made back in like I don't know 1918 or something. It was called The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Have you heard of that? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, well, in 1990, in or 1989, they made a sequel to it in color with sound, and it's just called oh, Doctor Caligari. And if you've never seen it, oh, gotta, I gotta go you, check that you out. You gotta find it and see it. It's one of my all-time oh, favorite cult Write movies. It's just called Doctor Caligari, and what it is is it's Doctor Caligari's daughter who's continued on with his legacy oh, of weird cool. experiments. So it's a female villainous, and it's all done I in bright it. colors. It's, be it's beautifully done. Yeah. That is Dr. awesome. Dr. Nice. Caligari. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's awesome. All right. So I know you guys have been working on filming for Clown Motel 3 for Joseph Kelly. Yes. So have you guys finally wrapped up filming yet? or? Well, we've done the first. There's, there's like three phases of this film. Okay. And, um, I'm, I've been honored to come on as one of the executive producers, and I'm mm. uh, the director of special effects for the film. So Joseph's really uh, delegated authority to me to, like, you know, produce whatever I can imagine, which is amazing, mm. an amazing place to be, right? You trust me right. that much. And, of course, I follow the script as closely as possible. Uh, but, you know, sometimes, like, for instance, we recently were – out in the desert for uh, 13 days. And, you know, oh, wow. I, I told Joseph, I said, I said, Joseph, I'm going to pack everything I have in the car. I'm going to have, you know, two male arms, two male legs, a male torso, a female torso, guts, hearts, severed heads. I'm going to have some silicone. I'm going to have some slime. I'm bringing 10 gallons of blood. I'm bringing this, 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 this. And then we're going to like, we're just going to make stuff. We're, we're going to create things, you know, we're going to create <laughs> stuff, you know, and some of the actors brought like, you know, knives and like breakaway bottles and, you know, these weird things and this and that. And can we kind of, can we kill with this? Can we do with this? Um, it's like, like Josie yeah, cat yeah. with blood. Yeah. 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 You know, I'm just like, well, let's see what we can do. You know? I mean, at one point there was a scene where someone had to eat a bug and I'm like, well, we're not going to eat a real bug. And I'm like, I went outside and I found all these little, like, I, 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 I'm still, I'm still the kid. I'm still like a little kid from like four years old. I found, I found like an acorn and I found like these little, little leaves that look like wings. And you know how like in, when pine cones fall from the tree, if you, if you look at the front of a pine cone, it looks like the abdomen of a, of a bug. It looks like the thorax of a bug. And I oh, picked okay. that off and, and I glued it all together and made a little bug that someone could put in their mouth. You know, this is, it, it, we just went all out. We just, just <laughs> complete creative, creative clown fest, you know, in the middle of well, the that's desert. Awesome. Everybody's that's covered in, in in clown makeup. I get to be in the film. I'm a I'm a, my my clown's called Jacks in the Box. I come out of a Jack in the Box. Ah, and, nice. Uh, that's fun. Fun, so, so. Yeah, yeah. That awesome. There were no showers though. Everybody had to be covered in blood. No, I'm kidding. There were showers. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, but you'd be surprised, you know. Everybody, um, they just couldn't wait to die, you know. And I'm so I feel so grateful that. People will trust me and they, they trust me to put like, you know, the special blood in their eyes or in their mouth or be covered in blood. Or I'm like, hey, I'm going to glue this piece of metal to your face. Are you OK? You're comfortable. This kind of thing. They trust me, you know, and oh, that's, uh, that's awesome. knock on wood. I've that's never cool. hurt anybody and I and I don't plan on it. And, and that's the, good. The, the actor's safety is my, is my number one priority. But we do uh, get pretty creative and do some weird stuff. That's awesome. And then so I heard there is the. Uh, Al Burke was reprising his role as Punchy the Clown. Al was there on set. I love that. I love that man. He's that's uh, what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's the it's, shit. I love him. It's, it's so cool to see like someone like Al or someone like Josie or someone like myself when you put yeah. on clown makeup. When you put on clown makeup and you're all dressed up like a clown, you get to just be free. You know, yes. it doesn't matter. Right. You know, you're kind exactly. of in disguise and. You get to act kind of kooky and just be playful and just be yourself. So um, I think yeah. Joseph Kelly, our director, and Dave Bailey, our co-producer, and uh, he's one of the creative forces in the film, really has have been able to like ensemble 
not only a creative group of people, but an environment where people can really be truly original and unique and free, you know? Oh, that's and, great. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's going to show on camera. It's really going to show. That's lots great. of lots of amazing women and men on set. Lots of amazing uh, talent, and um, I I can't wait for to see it. So yeah, so to answer your first question, we we we've gone through the first stretch of it, and now the, there's going to be another another stretch of it. And if you'd like to be a part of Clown Motel Three, there's still time to get involved. You can reach out to Joseph Kelly or Dave Bailey, uh, right. and I know we're shooting more of the film in Lancaster, California, in November. Uh, there's, okay. still, there's, still, there's still time for you to to be a clown in the movie come be on set get some blood poured on you and uh yeah but reach out to them and see how you can make that happen i'm sure there's still campaign perks going and there's things yeah, going yeah. on and uh yeah you know so yeah we'd love to have you there want to be a clown amy uh, no, I just want the blood poured on me. That's all. Come I know, right? Can we do that. That's going to be covered in, in fake blood. Come down. Right? Camera. In it. That's all I want. Uh, I'm I mean, not I know. So why not? <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a want. lot more. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot more things than blood. There's all kinds of cool stuff we poured on people. You, you'll see in the film. I uh, have all Ooh. kinds of different concoctions and stuff. So can we? Oh, I'm it? excited. I can't wait oh. until to see that one. So that's going to be great. <laughs> Oh yeah, never a dull moment. No. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, we're 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 doing this for entertainment purposes only. We want to be, we want to have fun, we want it to right. be entertaining, and we want to also try to do something that's truly unique. There used to be a time right. in filmmaking. I don't. You remember Jennifer back in like the seventies and eighties when it was important for a movie to be really original and unique and it was very yeah. secretive everything was very secretive until the movie yes. was released yeah. there wouldn't be like all these pictures online first and this and that and the other everything was yeah. always very secretive because everybody was always trying to make something truly unique and nowadays you know i know a lot of people post a lot of pictures online and the story is also very important but uh you know that's also one of my goals is to try try to do something that's never been done before i mean that's what all we want to see right we want to see we want to see something new something different so yeah right yeah. Exactly. That's great. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, so I know you've been working on a few other projects. Um, okay, so tell me about uh, so what's going on with Pool Party Massacre Two? Pool Party Massacre Two. That is the sequel to the smash hit cult follow up Pool Party Massacre. Uh, I know that Drew Marvick made this film. I love uh, that movie. Back in, yeah, um, I think he made it in like I want to say 2015 or 2016. Yeah, I think he made the, yeah, he made the whole movie for a very very small amount of money, and but it looked amazing and it totally delivered. It had plenty of great yes. kills, had a great cast, and so now he made uh, Pool Party Massacre too. And what he did was he um, he hired a whole bunch of super industry professionals to come in and help him shoot the film. Uh, I, I created all the special effects for the film and he okay. has this amazing all-star cast of like um, uh, social media uh, talent with, with big, big name talent in the film. And um, uh, he's, he's very excited to show everybody that, you know, I think they release very, very few pictures online of anything. He okay. wants to keep it a secret, yeah. but yeah. Right. So every okay. Every, so has he, that one already released yet, or no? No, still, no, no. no they, 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 yeah, they still have okay. a little, little, little ways to go. But I, they gotcha. brought in a whole bunch of really great people to put it together. It's gonna look like a million bucks. And um, you know, one, one of the, one of the, I'll just put this out there. One of the, um, uh, one of the things that got me the part was I said, Drew, if you hire me to do this, you won't have to worry about any of the blood, because he'd already had so much to worry about. He's like. Okay, you're in, you know, like, like, I he doesn't have to worry about any of them. So then with that being said, every single death had to be a home run. There could okay. be no weak deaths on set. And that was okay. a challenge. So, so every day I was just like, you know, we, we, we worked uh, nonstop for 11 days shooting this thing. And wow. um, each day was a death and each day was focus, 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 and make sure this death was a home run. We wanted each one to be amazing. And, um, wow. That was why I was brought in. So I'm, I can't wait for everybody to see it. Oh, that's going to be great. I'm that's very fun. excited for that, that one. I, like the, I love the first one. So, you know what I mean? Well, he totally yeah. outdoes himself with this one for sure. Yeah. It's it's like a, it's like, it's like a guilty pleasure, like a giant box of chocolates. Right. 
Hold on. Uh, uh, you guys go ahead. Uh, keep asking questions. I got to deal with something for half a second. I'm putting myself on mute. You got go for it. Your co-host. So, so how long have you actually been doing all the makeup artists and the blood and all of that? Oh, that's a great question. Well, I have, I made my, you know, basically I made my first rubber mask when I was 12 years old. All right. Now I got paid for my first gig, I believe when I was 15 years old, but, wow. uh, you know, I, um, I've, I had always wanted to do, um, monsters and special effects when I was probably about seven years old, when I saw Godzilla versus the smog monster for the first time. And my, yeah. my, 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 my father was my biggest inspiration. My, my, my husband's like, don't tell that story about your father again. That's boring. No, no. It, it, the tr truth be told, you know, I grew up in South Texas in a very, um, a very challenging time in the seventies as a, as a, as a gay, a young gay male. And, um, my, my mother was, um, she just was not, uh, interested in having a gay son. And my father saw very early on that I had something that the rest of the family did not have. I had talent. I had an actual talent. And when I, I remember when I was five years old, my dad was like, I came home from school, elementary school, and I had painted this picture of a clown. We all in class, everybody had to do a clown. Right. And right. I remember I painted this picture of a clown and I brought it home and my father looked at it and he said, literally, I can like, it was like, it was like it was yesterday. Lift me up just like this, looked at me in the face and said, this is good. You wow. Know? And, yeah. um, you know, and, uh, and then my dad then pursued to do everything he could to point me in the right direction, you know? Oh, wow. And despite all the challenges I faced around me, I had an older brother that was very jealous of me and used to torment me. And, um, Aww. I had a, a, a very brutal, uh, upbringing. I won't go into detail. I've, I have on other shows, you know, a very brutal upbringing. And, uh, you know, I just uh, was always, I was, something has always guided me and, and put me where I needed to be. And I, uh, I found another family member who was really interested in horror films and his name was Eddie Perez. And he had a twin brother named Ernest Perez. I was 11. They were 33 and they used to take me to all the, uh, I don't, do you remember Amy, uh, back in like the, the like late seventies and early eighties, how movies were unrated or yes. non-rated. Yeah, yes. and the horror movies were like, like they were basically rated X, but it was just called. It had a U or an N, and yep. uh, so my my cousins used to take me uh, uh, to the to the movies to see these unrated horror films. I was like 11, 12, 13 years old, and yeah. um, you know they 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 knew that I needed guidance because I didn't have it at home when it came to this sort of thing to be encouraged, and um, uh, they did. They 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 inspired me, and they nurtured me and they encouraged me to be the man I am today, you know? So I don't know That's where it, yeah, it, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a, what do you call it? Um, a, it was a, it was a, it was a, a learning adventure of, of who I needed to be and where I needed to be. I think it's that way with everybody though. Right. When it comes yeah. to what they, what they want to do and their dreams and stuff. But right. yeah, I, was, I would think I was like 15 when I got paid for my first gig. And, um, oh. uh, but it was a, it was a, it was a slow, a slow nurturing education as I go from one, one um, mentor to the next. You know, Tom Savani was also one of these mentors. Yeah, yeah. tell us about Tom. Uh, well, I mean, I, I I've only met him in person once, but when I was 12 years old, uh, used to be able to do this thing. I don't know if you remember. You could call um, 411. You remember yes. 411? I do. For, you call for 411 was where you call the operator and if you, the person that you were trying to reach was listed in the white pages of the phone book of their city they would give you their phone number so i call 411 and i say i like the number to mr tom savani in pittsburgh pennsylvania and they would look yes. it up and they would they, they, they are, here's please hold for the number and then they gave me tom savani's home phone number oh you uh, did not that's cool <laughs> oh my gosh and, yeah so then i would call and i say may i speak to tom savani and he'd say this is tom and i'd say hi this is joe i was joey castro at the time this is joey castro and i live in hello texas and i um i love your work and may i talk with you a little bit about how you make your blood and and he would tell me and he would just wow. tell me over the phone. He would sit and chat with me. And he was a very kind man. And cool. um, I will never forget that. That's great. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's great. Now, um, did you did you ever go into like any classes and and like try to 
learn a little bit more on how to make, you know, uh, clown faces or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, (laughs) you know, uh, it's so it's funny that you said two things. One, I didn't paint any of the clown faces on the Clown Motel 3 set. We had a very, very talented young lady. Her name is Marsha Miller. And her and another girl, a very talented woman named Mary Kate. She, um, Mary, 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 right? Mary, what's her name? Hold on a second. Now I'm going to make sure I didn't get that wrong. <laughs> She's right at the top of my page. Her name is Mary Kate. Yes. Mary Kate. That's her, that's her, that's her name, her professional name. And Mary and Marsha painted all the clown faces. But because I, I can't, I can't paint a straight line if you ask me to. That's why. <laughs> that's, 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 that's too funny. That's too funny. So um, I wasn't gonna go into it, but okay. <laughs> like li- 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 literally, I did my own makeup, and it was just painting it white. And then I had two lines right here on my face, and I oh, took yeah. like I took like a like a like a stir stick from like the coffee pot, oh, to like line a it coffee up. cup. And I no, I I dipped that in the black paint, and I went eh, on my eye, and then oh, went, that's oh, hilarious. <laughs> because I was like, do not ask me to draw a straight line. I know how to make gory, <laughs> drippy, you know, gross stuff, but but but. The, but the, but to answer your question, do I t- did I take classes or did I take classes? You know, I came into the uh, the field in like like literally moved to Los Angeles in 1989. But before that, mm-hmm. there was a whole group of us that were all learning ourselves. You know, all this, this group of young people who were trying to learn special effects. And I don't know if you don't don't know if you remember, but we used to have this thing, and we call it snail mail now, right? And right. I would literally I would literally write letters to to other people that wanted to be special effects artists and I we we mail each other pictures of our work and talk about oh, how wow. we made it how we how we made it and wow. um and we found each other we found each other because there was a magazine called Cinemagic and if you subscribe oh, yes. if I you remember subscribe, that yeah, yeah oh and Fangoria and if you subscribe to the yes, magazine Fangoria. they would give you three like three little lines in the back of the magazine a year where you could put your name your phone number and maybe like a little sentence and i'd be like hi my name is joey castro i want to be a professional special effects artist please call me if you'd like to talk and that's just how we this is how we oh we wow found, we found each other back in the day that's amazing <laughs> that is crazy <laughs> and then when then we you know we get each other's addresses on the phone and then we became you know pen pals and when I moved out to Los Angeles in 1989, I moved out here because a friend of mine who I was pen pals with uh, started a special effects company with another friend of his that he met as a pen pal through in, from New York. And wow. they're like, hey, Joe, come out. We, we have we got a movie di- movie that we're going to do special effects for. If you come out here on this date, we'll put you to work. So <laughs> myself and another friend of mine drove out to Los Angeles with our two twin beds in the back of a U-Haul, you know, a little dresser, all of our clothes and enough money to pay for first and last month's rent. And we drove out to Los Angeles and we we drove up, you know, to my friend's apartment complex because he didn't have much money to have a house. And we went and knocked on his door and we're like, hey, we're here. We're ready to start working. And he opens the door and he's like, hey, how's it going? The job fell through. We don't have any work. Oh, (laughs) that was my interview. Welcome to Hollywood, baby. Anyway, that's, that's about yeah. right. You know? <laughs> well, yeah. That's how it started. That was literally my, 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 my first day in Los Angeles. And um, I knew immediately that we were not going to give up. Uh, my friend who is Chris Olivier, who actually went on to be a very well-known visual effects artist. And he's still my friend today. Um, and I uh, went and we found an apartment. Uh, he went and got a job, uh, I think, at Michael's. In the meantime, oh, wow. working in the framing department because he was working at Michael's in San Antonio, where we came from. I oh, went right. and got a I went and got a job at Universal Studios in the theme park. But we did eventually awesome. f- meet up with this group of friends, and we all learned from each other what we could, you know. And yeah. some of us went off to work for other shops. Some of us went off to work for other shops, and then brought the information they learned back. And we were all right. learning from each other. Yeah. But to, but 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 to really answer your question, do I take classes? That's a good question. You know, I started taking classes about four years ago and i what i did was i found a mentor of one of my mentors his name is rob berman who runs a a very he runs year-long classes and rob rob's father has been in the industry 
his grandfather was in the industry. Oh, they, they're, they're, their whole family's been in the industry for many, many decades. And they've actually probably worked on all the movies you love. Uh, the, wow. the Beast Within, Cat People, Ghostbusters, uh, The Goonies, Batman oh. Returns. I can just go yeah. on that. Anyways. Oh, it's amazing. So, so Rob Berman taught me. He, it's so funny because I went to take a class to learn how to make uh, encapsulated silicone prosthetics. But what I really learned was how to learn. He taught me how to listen. He taught okay. me how to teach myself, All which right. is even more valuable. Does if that makes sense? Yeah. Does that makes sense. Yes. I mean, yes. just, just watching him, just like, like interact with people and like be busy around the shop. I was learning stuff where he wasn't even trying to teach. He just has so much knowledge. Like taking his wow. class is so much more than just learning the one thing he's trying to teach you. And, right. uh, and I will forever be grateful for for that man and then of course he introduced me to another man his name is brian wade who is a very very well-known famous sculptor and special effects artist in the industry and right wow. at the beginning the beginning of the pandemic when everything shut down and no one had any work i reached right. out to brian and asked brian if he would <clears throat> if he would show me some sculpting school skills so so i went and took a class with brian it was a one-on-one -on -one. Uh, that man literally i mean i don't i get emotional just thinking about it shaped me to be the man, I, the, the sculptor and the artist I am today in just like 16, 16 hours of watching him and being there with him and just talking with him. You know, you learn so much. That's great. And, and when someone's worked in the industry for decades and you go to, to like watch them work, it's like, it's just like someone's pouring information in front of you. It's like, how much can you retain as they're, right. as they're working, you know? Amazing. Yeah. So That's that amazing. Sense. Yeah. And Don Lanning is also a man who was working in the industry for many years. I took his sculpting class as well. And he he awesome. also is a man who's taught me that taught me how to teach myself. Not it's not so much how to do something, but how to look at doing something. Right. Which is something that kind of goes over some for certain people's heads. Right. Yeah. yeah. So very true. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for asking me that. That those, those yeah. men need to be acknowledged, and I always take the time to acknowledge men like that yeah that's great yeah. that's good it's beautiful that's what you want to do <clears throat> you know it's, we all had we all had to learn from somewhere or from someone mm -hmm. or you know yeah. what I mean? absolutely yeah 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 good and the bad you learn from all of it <laughs> uh -huh. i know yeah. everybody what is it everybody is in hollywood example. everybody's a great example they're either an example of how to, what to do or example of what not to do what not to do yeah very true like, don't wear sneakers on the red carpet. I'm just kidding. Uh, don't, don't wear blue jeans. That's a me carpet. thing. That's you know, a me thing. I, 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 I've, learned, <laughs> I, I've learned never to wear blue jeans on a red carpet. I, I just find it very impersonal. Some people can, but yeah. for me and with me, I, I, I don't, I don't do it anymore. I used yeah, to, yeah. And even if I had a nice shirt on, I'm like, I look at the picture, I'm like, but you're wearing blue jeans. It's like, no, no. no, like, remember, like every time I would come down there to do the red carpet with you guys, I'm wearing a really nice gown. Uh -huh. But then you look down, and I'm wearing fucking sneakers. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> yeah, 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 don't wear sneakers. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, hard, it's hard to walk around in damn Hollywood. Oh yeah. Um, especially how far that damn bar was from where the TCL Chinese theaters was. Oh yeah, it was way. Coming back, coming back, Billy, all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> like damn, are we there you should, yet? You should have told me. I would have taken you. I would have taken you along. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't realize it was that freaking far the first time. I was like, "Oh no, kidding!" The second time I made I made JJ drive us uh, down and park uh, closer there, but the first time I was like, "Damn it!" <laughs> it gets spooky on that end at night too, doesn't it? Get a little spooky down there on that end uh, at, just, at night. Yeah, at, at, yeah, it gets a little spooky yeah. over there. Just a tad. <laughs> down by oh yeah, down by it's more it's close because yeah. it's down by Coenga. Yeah, well, it's by it's, like it's, Hollywood it's, and Coenga, basically. It's right down by it's, there. It's, so it's that Hollywood. whole vine and Coenga and Ivar freaking area is yeah. just in it's just nuts. It, it's yeah. got like more more everything that you don't want to see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, I would say yes. Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> Hollywood Boulevard is like a movie set. 
if you go up and touch the, the, the background, you find out it's kind of like plastic and then you, you can kind of peel it. It's like, oh, it's not really real behind there. It's really, kind yeah. of like a facade. It looks kind of pretty. <laughs> then you get it closer, you're like, oh, it smells here. Oh, this is not right. Yes. This is the Hollywood Walker. Yeah, it's not at all. Samantha and I used to get annoyed when we'd be walking down Hollywood Boulevard during the day and there's so many freaking tourists and we'd be like, oh, fucking tourists. Oh yeah. Roll eyes and then just try to push around them because they want to stop every half a second to freaking look at something. And it's like, I live here. Get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's like here in Maine, damn tourists. Why is it like everywhere I live, it's a tourist area? I live in a tourist area too. I don't know why. Well, what, what uh, no, it's living? like everywhere I move, everywhere I live, it's a fucking tourist area. Oh, yeah. I swear Maine, to God. Maine's a beautiful state. Of course, people are going to It is a everywhere. gorgeous state. It's just goddamn all year long, too, because everyone wants to go skiing in the winter, well, even. Well, yeah, so well, like, well, I'm sure. Yeah, the weather's probably there beautiful in the middle of the heat over here, right? Is it cooler up there? A way cooler, yeah. There you go. Uh, I miss I miss California weather. That's all I'm gonna say. There, there are I'll be honest with you. There are nights I'm like, damn, I, I'm so happy I live here. <laughs> the That's what I'm saying. So you do not just, want main main uh, winters fucking suck. So I was gonna say. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Okay. So I know. Okay. Mutilator two. What's going on with that one? Mutilator that. two. Mutilator two. Uh, the movie has not been released yet. Okay, got uh, you. We shot it almost three years ago, I think. Three years okay. ago. Wow. It's been done it for a while. It still hasn't been released? Mm -mm. What's, what's holding it up? Okay, we can't talk about these things? Okay. Well, that's, no, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> no, no, like, 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 no answer is also an answer. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is holding it up? I got um, you. Yeah, okay. they're, they're, they're making lots of festival rounds with it right now. I, okay. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I, I, I took my husband to see the, uh, the, that to the premiere of it. It was uh, okay. shown at a drive-in in, 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 the, in Las Vegas. We, you know, my oh, husband wow. like, flew us to a really nice hotel. We stayed at the Vidara hotel, brand new hotel oh, nice. in the strip. And, um, you know, we all got all dolled up and went out there to meet the cast and crew. And when I arrived, um, you know, uh, the, um, for, oh, let me preface this by saying I worked on the movie for approximately six to eight months before the movie was shot, just working closely with the director. I created all the special effects for the film. They flew people yeah. to my studio in Los Angeles and I worked on, I worked I work putting the whole film together. And, um, when I got to the premiere, they had a table with, uh, you know, the, uh, everybody from the cast and crew signing autographs, but they never asked me to sign the autographs. Really? Yeah. And oh. then, and then okay. I was like, okay, that's fine. That's fine. You know, you, you're going to go see the mute. You think you're going to go see the mutilator too, because of this phenomenal performance from, I don't know. Anyways, I'm just saying mutilator too, right? Yeah. Twice the blood, twice the gore. Anyways. Yeah, so, exactly. then, uh, so then after that, um, we didn't. We weren't asked to sign any autograph. That's fine. You know, it didn't bother me. Uh, but then uh, I, I, they did. They, they were handing out free posters of the movie to everybody. Yeah. They didn't give me one. So then, so then I asked, and they, they, they they're kind of like, okay. And then everybody was autographing. Everybody was at autographing everyone's poster, and and so they were autographing everybody's poster. And people asked me to autograph their poster, and so when the the producer and came around to autograph my poster he autographed it and put like two so and so somebody else's name on it and ruined my poster are you serious yeah, yeah what yeah. how do you so, not even remember the person's name who did your and, 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 and then he was like this oh, 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 oh i'm so sorry mr i'll just kind of scratch it off your name right there okay so uh, whatever whatever you want to be in, whatever you want to be a whatever be a new fucking okay. poster so anyway. then so then my husband um, I go over to introduce my husband to the producer and the director. Yeah, and I thought, you know, well, all this is we're going to be professional here, whatever, blah blah blah. Yeah, and I walk my husband over to me, and they look at him up and down, and then they said, I think I was talking to the cinematographer and just walked away, didn't say hello to me, didn't say hello to my husband, nothing. I don't know what, what was going on, just that's ignorant, just straight up. Just disrespectful, rude, rude, disrespectful. Just straight up screwed up. 
And so they then, support an orange man yeah, by yeah. any chance. <laughs> and then, and then, right. and then well. I went to watch the premiere with everybody on the big screen. My husband mm -hmm. has an Emmy, is an Emmy, is an Emmy award winning. Yes. Actor. Yes, he has, he has editing for the the Amazing Race. He has, and he had, now he has his Big Brother, and he's done The Apprentice. This he's done awesome. all the all, all the big shows. What's up with that damn robot on Big Brother? And we're <laughs> leaving there. Like, <laughs> and anyway, so we're watching the movie, and first of all, some of the special effects I made for the film were like some like the best things I've ever created. Now, when wow. I got to set, you know, they didn't really listen to any direction i was giving them about how to photograph it or how to light it or how to shoot it or anything they they had their right. own ideas and they just I was there to be of service and help them do whatever it is they wanted because they were very very uh, uh, uh um, critical about receiving any sort of uh feedback so anything you see on camera yeah is solely from the producing team and from the director you can't gotcha. blame anybody you can't blame anybody else for it they got exactly then what that's they their asked. problem they exactly what they yeah. asked for yeah. And, and so when we watched the movie and we're watching it, we're thinking, wow, this is strange. Like, there's no blood in this film. What's going on? They uh -huh. literally trimmed all the effects down to just like two frames here, half a second here. I'm like, wait, this is the mutilator two. It should be twice the blood. So right. I've I, we were watching it. And then, and then we also noticed there's no sound effects in this movie. Like, there's no, what? you know, like when someone dies, you hear it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where's where's yes? Where's there's, there's, there's no sound effects. It's not a horror film. movie without sound effects. So then, right? I, th th then I did a little research and I found out the guy that edited the movie has never edited a movie before. What? Yeah. Why? Why? First time editing a film. Anyways. What? They cut out all the good parts. <laughs> yeah, I made this fake head that was so realistic. It was like it was like hanging in front of camera. You couldn't even tell it wasn't the actress, right? There's a scene in the film, and I won't give it away, but the the, the fake head is there, and just looking at it on camera, you could not tell it wasn't the actress like hanging. It's hanging from a rope, um, and they literally cut it down to just like frames. Like the the guy had no idea what he was doing. He did not know Obviously. how to edit. He did not know how to edit gore. Now. I have I have started a campaign, and I hope that your my interview with you is also yeah. going to be a part of the campaign to get these distributors or to get this these producers and this director to go back and prove me wrong and cut back in all the gore. Yeah. See, they're, they're yeah. going to they're, they're see this interview and they're going to hear this, and they're right. going to know that my husband, who is an Emmy award winning editor, watched the 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 premiere and thought wow these people had no idea what they were doing when they cut it yeah, my, 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 my husband yeah my husband's edited 19 horror films all with blood and gore oh. and deaths so he knows oh, he knows how to do this stuff oh, he's yeah, got he what he he knows what he's why didn't they hire oh, him well oh, yeah, conflict of interest like, well once again like i said they, I they, uh, yeah. they, they, they there's going to be more drama that's going to come out later on that i'll review okay, got you. i've kept it really professional here I got you. More drama is going to go on, but I'm hoping that they go back, they do a new cut of the film, and they go back and they put in like the entire shot of this girl I'm talking about hanging from the rope of their neck because you could literally just cut to that fake head, just like just like sitting there right before the death happens, and then play the whole thing out. It looks so realistic. Anyways, there's that kind of stuff. There's all kinds of stuff. Let's see if they do it. Let's see. Let's see if they go back and they they cut it right because after the screening. At the uh, the premiere, it was at a drive-in. Everybody ran to the to the bathroom, right? So I just went <laughs> to the bathroom to see I would hear anybody, what anybody right. would say. And I heard them yeah. say things like, this is what they said. They said, what the hell was that? <laughs> and I heard them say things like, isn't this the mutilator too? Shouldn't it be twice right. the blood? And then I heard somebody say, and this is kind of sad, this movie should never have been made. Oh. They were so disappointed. Oh so my I'm God! Carl Crew was watching. Oh, good, good. He says anyways, Castro is the coolest. Oh, okay, uh, tell him I said hello. Tell him I said hello. <laughs> but anyways, I know that we shot some great stuff on set, and I hope that they can go back and cut it in, and or maybe have someone that is like non-biased. Right. They, 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 like you know how like, you give you give your film to a non-biased person, and they can yeah. look at it from a fresh point of view, and they can really cut it and put it put it together correctly but the yeah. edit that i saw was not was not was not good it was not up to par and i'm hoping Man. they can go back and clean it up 
And of course, I have video and pictures of all of my work that I will post in all the beautiful, gory details so everybody can see everything, even though they trim it, and they may or may not have trimmed it down to just minuscule and seconds and whatnot. Right. But, uh, and then, and then uh, you can have me on when we when the movie does come back out because I have a whole bunch more more drama to tell. But you know, everything that I've told you tonight and today is completely true. It happened just as right. I described it, and. Um, yeah, uh, I hope that uh, it, it the movie does get its just due release with a complete uncut version with all the gore intact. And uh, I want to give a shout out to all my friends that were on set and all the talented actors and actresses that I did work with. All of your performances are there and you were amazing and I love you. And uh, I hope we get a true mutilator, too. That's it. Yes, that'd be great. Yes, that would be awesome. That would be good. Yes. You heard it here first. <laughs> right. We got the scoop. You, you, yeah. they, they, this is the first one. I, I haven't said anything to anybody on any show. This is it first. <laughs> Hell but yeah. We we Worldwide exclusive. Insight. Yes. <laughs> it's like everybody always wants to release all their new stuff on, on with me. I don't know what it is. I've had so many worldwide exclusives over the decades. <laughs> it's because crazy. they trust you. They just want to tell me everything. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Good. Oh. Hold your secrets or something. Well, even though it's we're aired live, so I'm sure everybody can hear me. Everything great happened. So, all right, um, all right. So let's talk about. Okay, so I see. Uh, and the what's this about? Unspeakable beyond the wall of sleep. Yeah. Can you show the trailer? Can we show the trailer? Right yes. Now? Let's show okay, the let's do the trailer. Hold that thought. Well, this will be a good time for me to sign off while you're getting into yes. the trailer. So Bye, you guys have a good night. Bye. Bye. Have good night. On our, our show. I appreciate you. And thank you. We'll Thank see you, you soon. Nice. Yep. Uh, uh, let me know how the concert goes. Okay. I will. Thank you. All right. Bye. Love you. Bye. <laughs> I'll kick her out. <laughs> All right, hold on. I'm going to put you in the waiting area and I'm going to go play it. I already have it uh, pulled up and ready to go. So, okay. All right, give me one second. Hold that thought. All right, let's see. Do, 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 do. Share the screen. And right. Okay. And I'm going to save. Somewhere in the dark of infinite space, there is a form of life that man has reason to fear. It is as old as the universe. It is real. It is evil. And now, it is here. After fear. Beyond terror, there is the flesh samples. They're consistent. So, what are you getting at? We have a creature that identifies with nothing known on Earth. have felt the terror of the dark. There is only one way on earth they will ever see the dawn. Are you prepared for the terror? Not all alien encounters will be friendly. What do you think? <laughs> and, and 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 you know it, it, you know it didn't, the, it, it, it didn't play an actual like it was a little <laughs> so go back and watch it again and really take it in 
That's how I'm gonna have to. Sure. Like, I'm not even sure what I watch. The, the film yeah, what, did I, <laughs> a so weird good. thing for a penis. I don't know what's going on there. That was the first the thing I tits did. and stuff, the fucking just like all the crazy shit going on. I recognize some of the actors. I mean, I saw you in there, obviously, but I saw some other people too um, that I recognized. Eddie so, Furlong is in it. Eddie yes, Furlong. I saw that. I thought that was him. Oh yeah, my god, him. dude, Edward Furlong from fucking Terminator Two. Oh my and, god, and Bai Ling's in it too. You know, Bai Ling. Wow. Yes, yeah, I saw Bai Ling. I was I thought that was her. Okay, yeah. fuck yes. I love her. Yeah. I've always um, loved her as an actress. But like Robert Miano and Susan Priva, she they 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 were the two main leads. Uh Robert plays one of the villains. Then with that villain, that nude villain, and and then a guy named Corey Love also played his alter ego in it. He's really good at okay. it. And, uh, there's a lot of great performances in it. Um Margie Bergenholtz is in it it's from uh, the original Evil Ed back in the eighties. And, oh yes uh, yeah. I lo oh yes that was a great I, I love that. I mean, all my friends are in the films sylvia spross and there's, there's just a whole bunch of great people and i know i'm gonna miss somebody uh, uh yeah i recognize a few people like even like the sub uh more than the supporting characters like i recognize the, uh, some of the ad other actors from like other movies That's, and stuff Su yeah Su suzanne sumner ferry is one of the producers and she's also in the film oh i know who's in it um uh uh, 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 uh steve uh what's his name oh from uh, life force i forget his name oh gosh <laughs> oh what's the, who's the, the lead actor in that i know Anyways, yeah, there's so many, there's so many great people in the film. So, um, and, uh, but that was some crazy shit we were watching. That's a Chad Farron film, and he produced it. And you know, we have great casting from Jeff Olin. Uh, Jeff Olin um, cast all of Chad's films. Excuse me, with right. him, and uh, uh, Jeff Olin's a famous Hollywood casting agent. Uh, if you okay. re reach reach out to him. And talk with him. I mean, he's that guy knows everybody, and he's done everything. He worked on Pulp Fiction, and he oh, worked wow. on he worked on that new film uh, that just won uh, uh, an Emmy. Or uh, oh, at Maxine. He just did Maxine. He just okay. uh, yeah, yeah, you know the, the the new horror film that came out, and oh, he's yeah. did, oh he won the the uh, Emmy for um, uh, the the Weird Al Yankovic story. What was it? Remember oh, that? okay. Yeah, yeah, the Weird Al Yankovic film and. I love know, him. He's, yeah, no, he's a, he's yeah. a great a great talent. So I've been really really blessed over the past, you know, about seven eight years to really um, put aside all everything that happened before that. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, we we briefly touched on Face Off a little bit, but Face Off was a television yeah. show that was kind of like a turning point in my career. You know, yeah. I, I went on that show with like. 30 years experience, but they weren't really interested in experience. I won't go into detail, but I, kind yeah, of, I, know. Like, I, I said, I you of, were, yeah, yeah I, I kind of, I kind of was forced to reinvent myself after that show. And, and it was for the best, you know, it was, it was amazing. I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad to have everything, everything. Sometimes things happen for us, not to us. And yeah, and yes. this is something that happened for me, but I didn't realize it until many years later. That something oh. it was a blessing. It wasn't. It wasn't a horrible thing. It was a blessing in disguise. Right. And so, so here we are. You know, here we are. But yeah, I love that movie. Unspeakable Beyond the Wall. It's probably. I, I can't say it's my favorite because I work with a lot of amazing directors, but yeah. it's probably the most entertaining film I've ever worked on. It's just pure entertainment from beginning to end. <laughs> Want to see something it's cool, really weird, and it, and the, the funny part is it all makes sense. Like you think, oh, how's this going to make sense? It's like if you watch it, the whole thing makes sense. You know? <laughs> the director's great at telling stories. so I'm going to have to go watch the whole thing from beginning to end for that one. <laughs> yeah, people will be on the wall of sleep. Yeah. Okay, and that so that one's actually been released? No, it's coming out. It's coming out right now. It's a film festival. The one that's out right now is the, is the old ones. It's got, okay, so, we were actually, I was about to touch on that here in a second. You got, exactly. You got, you got um, the deep ones, the old ones, and Unspeakable Beyond the Wall of Sleep. They're all three of those films are based on an HP Lovecraft stories, and they're all, all right. written, written and produced by the same director. But I think oh, I, I think I think Unspeakable is his is his is his masterpiece. It's it's it's, it's his, his tour yeah. de force. Yeah, that's the that, that one. Just we we we, 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 we recently had like a. Uh, uh, an LA screening of it at a film festival, and the audience was just rolling. It's just outrageous, you know. 
it, definitely not for the faint at heart or the weak. The we, 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 you, you know, people that ha don't have a strong taste, you know, because it's right. uh, it, it gets a little raunchy, it gets a okay. little, a, a, a little crude and a little disrespectful, but you know. That's all, all, all the things we love in a, in a movie. Most of the things I watch have that involve that yeah. in some yeah. way, even yeah. including the cartoons. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So, all right. So we're going to play. So let's play the trailer for the old ones. Okay. Sure. 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 And then, so give me one second. I'll be right back. All right. There we go. Let's see. Okay. I don't feel a pulse. My name is Russell Marsh. I was born in 1865. My name is Dan Gordon. I need an ambulance. We, we, we pull a man out of the, the river and... Run, Gideon, run! So what's an old one, anyway? The great old ones were here ages before mankind. Telling me in on what we're doing here and how this will help bring back my dad. We're gonna go see uh, Neil Arthur. Okay, who is Neil Arthur? Strange, dark one, to whom fellas bowed. So he's some kind of prophet then. Sort of. Fate to all the old ones that crossed my path. I offer you this. Leftovers? Oh, sorry. That 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 one is is uh, is more of a direct adaptation, and uh, it has a okay. little bit of it's lighthearted humor in it, more so than the right. other one. Uh, uh, and is a for actually it's a the young man that stars in the film with Robert Miano. Um, mm. He uh, uh, it was one of his first uh, uh, major role acting gigs, and he does okay. a really good, does a really good job in it. But I kind of I kind I kind of think of it as more of like a PG theme. PG thirteen kind of film, uh, you know, right. something you could watch with some with a, with a with a teenager, and you no one's going to be too offended. I think there is some oh, there's like a full you. frontal nudity of a of a woman in the film, but ultimately it's a lot of monsters and googly creatures and this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The wow. other one, lots of nudity. The other one, lots of strange nudity, and yeah. But this one is just <laughs> more of a, a light, light hearted uh, science fiction cosmic horror film. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is so great. Like, oh my God. I, you, you just, you just have the most amazing job. I just, like, that, it would just be so much fun to just be creative all the time and just do what you love. And I'm so glad that you have that, you know, in your life. Thank you. And you have such an amazing partner to share it with your husband, Stephen. You know Thank what I mean? You. Yeah. And he's extremely talented too and such a nice guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? So you you're batting a thousand, my friend. You're batting a thousand. I'm just very grateful to have been able to live my entire life as a special effects artist, basically, and continue yes. to do what I love today, you know. And That's I'm so great. grateful that people give me the opportunity and delegate authority to me to to bring their 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 visions to life, you know. Yeah. Because you're really good at what you do. Thank you. I appreciate you know what I mean? that. 
extremely creative, extreme, like, especially for somebody who is mostly self-taught. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it has learned along the way and like what, what works, what doesn't work, whatever. Like, you know, you know, the real color of blood. <laughs> it's Dude, important. I'm, it's I'm, important. It is. I'm just saying, I'm just it saying is. me and her, me, me and me and Samantha were griping about that the other day. It was a horror movie we watched and we said, I think it was the sixth one, it was wasn't one, it? Or seven? It, was, it was one of the Saw movies. And I was yeah. telling her, I was like, the blood, it has a pinkish hue and it just doesn't look it right. It doesn't look I was right. Like, blood looks off. It, you can tell it's fake. I, Who the I fuck did the special it. effects on this movie? They should be fired. Um, yes, the movie's already, yes. you know, out, but you know, <laughs> we're, we're saw that's our favorite horror movie franchises, the Saw series. So okay. we really are like, yeah. You know, I'm I'm that person. I I watch a lot of horror movies, a lot of fantasy, a lot of sci-fi. So everything is special effects, special effects, special effects. Yes. Plus the soundtrack. You didn't even have like any sound effects. Like mm. what? I'm the yeah. first one to uh, yeah harp on that. Anytime anything's that? off, I'm like, no. Nope, oh yeah. Cut it. Cut it. <laughs> cut it. Just cut. The you clip. can tell. You can tell she's my daughter. Uh, <laughs> attention to detail. Yeah, I agree with you 100. percent Yeah, it's the color of the blood. Well, for me, it's just like it just it 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 just takes away from the impact of the scene when yes. things are just off. So that's where it takes I, you out I, of the illusion. Takes yeah. you out of it. You're like, oh, this just doesn't look right. Like most people don't realize wall. that. Yeah, most yeah, people don't realize. Most people will see something and say i don't like that because it doesn't look right but most people won't understand why yeah right. and, the technical and, and, the yeah, technical yeah, yeah. Yeah. and you obviously can understand the ramifications of minor flaw or just a flaw that they, they, they can totally throw somebody off at the end yeah. the, the movie directed by david lynch it's called wild at yes. heart wild at yeah. heart you remember wild at heart at the yeah. end of the movie this cage has a broken nose and I remember the prosthetic was so bad. It was the color wasn't right. And it just was so bad. I watched this whole movie and I get to the end. And the climax of the movie's got a broken nose. I'm like, this took me out of the whole movie, ruined the whole movie. Yes. yes. That's exactly it. Is when something is off. It's like the whole movie could have been great, but then that one scene, it's like, all right. Now, now just, I have problems. Yeah. It's just like drag queens, drag artistry, anything. If it if yes. it's a piece of it's like I, I watch we watch a shitload of uh I watch a shitload of RuPaul's drag race and also uh the Boule Brothers Dragula. Because have you ever seen if you've never seen the Boule Brothers Dragula, you I need to not. check that one out because it's out. horror and sci-fi and fantasy more based, and they're like filth and and Gr more grimy and more you know okay. what i mean like the oh other God. side of like this is what i'm saying it's the other side of drag but if you if one thing is off it, the judges they were like okay this takes you out of the illusion yeah. of the overall thing you know what i mean should like I start, uh, with, I start yeah. with like a current season and then go back to the beginning or should i start with the first season and go Start, okay. Yeah, start with the first season and work your way. They have five seasons. Okay. Uh, it's called the Boule Brothers Dragula. Okay. And the that. two people who they're, they supposedly like, they're brothers. They're not brothers. They're actually a couple. Okay. They're actually a husband and <laughs> husband or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So they're actually like partners, which is awesome because they've run this whole, because they do the under underground scene. Uh-huh. Like the the big uh, drag parties and and like, but like more the grimy gritty side of things versus like okay. the polishy like you know I'm a yeah. pageant you know but right. <laughs> but they do more that whole, the slime the filth the degradation the like and some of it is even like it makes you feel uncomfortable in other ways you're like okay I don't know I'm not gonna watch that's what I'm saying. It's just awesome. And uh, one of our buddies uh, who was on our show recently, Justin Symbol, he has um, a band called the God Bombs. And in the God Bombs, in their newest video, Ghost of the Machine, it's uh, got 
the winner uh well i'm not gonna tell you but anyway it's somebody from that world and okay. her name is dio huru x and she's amazing uh from okay. china so there's just a lot of like it's just it's better they even do an episode where there's like kaiju Okay. They like dresses like the kaiju monsters and shit. Like it's just it's really badass. It's like a, di a different form. It's not the polishy, you know, whatever. But it's like that kind of thing. If you don't do something the right way, it takes you out of the illusion. All right. So Sounds if you're not like it, with anything, it's like with the movies, with any type of stuff, music videos, anything. If you don't do it like the right way, it it won't read it the correct way. Okay. I would definitely have to check it out. Definitely check it yeah. out. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I figured you would, you would, uh, you know, <laughs> you'd be cool with that world. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Got to be a fierce LGBTQIA. Uh, I, I don't know what else letters there oh. are, but a plus community. Oh. I would say for <laughs> for other. there's so many. There's so many. I don't know. I just say plus. plus. <laughs> I say I'm the cause I say I'm the biggest B I know. Get it? <laughs> my sister's an L. My nephew's a G. <laughs> I love Thank it. You. That's what I'm saying. Thank you for being supportive. Thank you. Well, because I'm part of the community and you know you gotta support everybody. Like we need to get the word out about about everything. I don't know. I'm just so you know, I'm one of those people. That's what I'm saying. She's part of the community also. So that's why. Yeah. Right on. Right on. <laughs> yep. yeah, we got it. We got to be, we got to represent. Yeah. I always, um, in, 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 in something that you will, you'll, you'll appreciate then in the terror tunes franchise, I always put, um, female roles in the roles that are normally male and male roles in, norm, in the roles that are normally female. It's just straight that's up. Awesome. I, I won't even, I won't even, it won't even, it won't even, um, bother whether or not the person is gay or straight in real life i'll just i'll ask like a straight man to to play a female role regardless That's great and then um in the very first terror tunes uh i just straight up had like this an actual married actor married man a, six, a heterosexual married man play uh the husband to another man who was dressed as a, a dressed in drag his name was shimmy okay. max and just played a straight up like female role as a mother not a drag queen but just yeah, yeah. the mother was a male, a man in man, yeah. man in drag, and the man yeah. was an actual heterosexual male. He didn't have a problem okay. with it at all. They just that's great. Right. There's, there's that's no, good. It, it was nothing, and uh, and and it's probably one of the biggest one of the biggest like tadas of that. Of the first film we also had um uh, a, a girl named um lizzie borden that was her stage name her name is janet, oh, okay. janet romano she was a very well-known um adult film actress and she plays okay. like a, she plays like a little like a like a little teenage girl in the film uh oh, and then uh we brought i brought in like all these different you know like, like just very very odd oddly cast but it, but when you watch the film it's very appropriate so, but that's cool yeah. that's see that's that's what we should be doing yeah. is you know playing with those types of things you the know gender, like yeah the gender yeah, yeah. you know like gender norms like play with the gender norms push the boundaries of what could be uh, like I, I, don't I, not everything belongs in a fucking box yeah like i, I, I always include a um a, like a trans or uh a, a gender uh like a non-binary or even a uh a, a, a drag gender queen in each one of my which, each one of my films and i don't like yes, i don't awesome. i don't i don't introduce them like like they're supposed to be i just just give them a regular character it doesn't i don't yeah. make a big deal i don't make a big deal out of it they're just no. there it's just, it's and just it a regular be a big deal role. yeah just yeah yeah, yeah. just right. having fun with it yeah. do you know how many motherfuckers have done drag over the years that were yeah. were straight yeah, and and not even for like, but, but, but not not even for like comedic reasons or anything like that. I just put them in the role. Like you're gonna be this, you're gonna be that. Just, just it. You're I love it. Like yeah. You know, yeah. People, I love it. People are people. I feel like that's all it should be. It should not be exactly. about all these other things. It's like we're all human beings. Right. Yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. You know I mean? Gotta have gotta have fun with it. You yes. know, that's the great part about that world. Is you can be something else. You know what I mean? Uh huh. I love it. That's what I'm saying. Acting, it gives you that ability. 
special effects, all those things, costumes, you know, like just it gives you that ability to, to step outside of yourself and do something great. Be yourself. Yes, you just be. I you could be somebody else. You be know? the best have version of it. yourself. Yeah. Yes, I just say have fucking fun with it. <laughs> be the best you that you can be. That's right. <laughs> I think it's awesome. I just love everything that you do. So I want to thank you so much for being on the yes. show. Mm. Oh my God, Joe Castro, mm. this guy, you are phenomenal. I just want to thank let you. you know that again. And they need on that movie to hire your husband to be the new editor. Is <laughs> yeah, it? It. Yeah, okay. yeah. I don't know if that's going to happen. Hello to <laughs> they just need to go back and, and have a non-biased person come in look at it and take yes. all the footage and put back in as much blood and as much score. As yes. Cause God, I don't care what please. it is uh, or where they go about getting it, but it's the mutilator too. And it needs double the blood from the first film. Yes. Exactly, I mean, we, this is 2024 for God's sake. Oh there, yeah, there, there, there are people. Tell. There are people. There, there are young people making movies that are putting them up on YouTube that have double the gore that's in Mutilator Two. Really? So, so yeah, they they, yeah. they 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 need to put their head on straight and realize what I they're doing. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Well, let everybody know. Tell everybody where they can find you. Your website, social media, stuff like that. Excellent. Thank you so much. Listen, if you want to make a movie or you want to talk with me, you can reach me every day on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Joe.Castro. I do check my messages on Instagram, just not as frequent. And you can reach me at Joe underscore Castro underscore director on Instagram. Or you can send me a message through my website where you can see my entire portfolio of all my work throughout the years, which is JoeCastroFX.com. And if yes. you want to see any of the movies that I've directed, uh, you can purchase them at www.terrortoons. That's spelled T O O N S, terrortoons.tv. Yeah, go there now and yeah. get yourself some, some movies like uncut, uncensored with all the blood and gore intact. Uh, yeah, go on Tubi, watch some of, of some of the stuff. Oh, yeah, two, you, can, you can watch Terror Tunes 4 on Tubi. You can watch the old it. ones right now on Tubi. It's also on Tubi. There's okay, a couple cool. other films I've worked on on Tubi. I think The Barn 2 is also on Tubi right now. I'm not sure. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of films I've worked on that are on Tubi right now. So not Exciting stuff. Thank we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be doing a, a marathon tomorrow. So <laughs> It's going to be Joe Castro Day. <laughs> yeah. so, so when you come when you come down for for another premiere, let me know in advance, and you know, are we gonna have oh, dinner yeah. before or something? Do something, and if you're in the Lancaster area or you want to come down for Clown Motel Three, I know that he needs. Uh, we're gonna need uh, killer clowns on set. You can come and be in the film and have some blood oh, yeah. on you. Reach out to Joseph Kelly and Dave Bailey for all that information. Oh yeah, I'll send them their way. Nice. I got a few people who needed to be employed um, <laughs> or do something <laughs> with their career. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, well, we want to thank Joe Castro so much to, oh for being God. on our show today. Very excited uh, to have him on this uh, show because now we have Fear and Fascination, Horror, Sci-Fi, Fantasy Unleashed. Uh, and I'm excited. Thank you so much, everybody out there for watching our broadcast tonight around the world. We appreciate you. And I'm going to be reposting this link uh, with links to all of his social media and his website. So that way you can see that and watch this interview. So have a good night, everybody. Stay Thank you, Samantha. Safe. Thank you, Jennifer. Y'all yes, have a beautiful rest of your Saturday night. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>